Well, hello. So, oh, by the way, let's start today with a question. I ran out of salt the other day for curing my duck legs. And I'd really like to know whether you can use dishwasher salt if you run out of salt. Please write in. Okay. Let's start with toast. Bread. Toast as a vehicle. Life on toast. A wonderful thing. A mother with open arms. Always reliable. When you've been for a long walk on the Cornish coast or in the wet Dorset woods, you get back and your hair is stuck to your forehead. And you take your trousers off and dry them on the radiator and you're cooking in your boxer shorts. What do you go for? Something on toast. Late afternoon. And this is one of my favourites. So starting with the bread because I don't want to be slicing the bread on a board. It might have been covered in clams. Um, I want one large piece of toast. A nice slice of toast ready for the toaster. I can forget about that now. Every now and again, your clam might have muddy designs to ruin um, the project. And so under cold running water, really bounce them up and down and the reason I'm doing this is that occasionally the only reason that the two shells are stuck together is because they're full of silt so hopefully you'll bust those ones open and they won't ruin everything okay so, there we go and this is still a good time of year the weather's nice and cold before we go into spring when they start getting a little bit thin so these should be nice and plump how do you know if they're good ones when you buy them they should be nice and tight and closed in their net. If you see them kind of open and rather sad looking, then just leave them well alone. But all of, there's not a, oh look, there's a broken one. We'll take that out. But these are all completely closed. They're obviously pretty fresh. And what am I going to start with? Just a little bit of water. No booze in this one. Just a bit of water, just enough to stop the, you can, if you put the shells in, in a hot pan, you get a kind of taste of burning shell. It's really, really not very nice. So now a lid. I can never find the right lid. Hopefully that one. Joy. Wrong lid, right fit. Now the important thing here is they're going to get cooked again. So I want to slightly undercook these course saving the amazing juice that's going to come out of them. Do you think we've lost our love for shellfish? Oof, gosh what's a loss of love? What's, I mean if you go to Wales no you know what do you get for breakfast? You know lava bread and cockles and bacon one of the best breakfasts in the world. Okay while of those are steaming open I'm just going to get some bacon and this is smoked bacon which you want to smoke for this dish. If you don't have it don't worry about it but I always prefer smoked bacon and this may be three slices. Now I like to buy my bacon, I, I get sliced bacon from my butcher because it's convenient at breakfast but I also always buy about a good kilo or half kilo of unsliced bacon and then I can make my own lardons or actually poach the whole bacon and have it in parsley sauce or whatever the case may be. Dice that up quite nice and thin, little kind of matchsticks probably a little tiny bit too much bacon actually. Keep an eye on your cockles, these are beginning to open now. Not cockles clams, I'm confusing you. These are just open but they're still very kind of soft and undercooked and that's what we want. Hello you. My dog, massive shellfish lover, she's tried longestines, she's tried oysters, she loves a razor clam. Um, you've eaten a bit of smoked cod's row. You like it all, don't you? They were getting there, but they need a little bit longer. If you were to remove shellfish from me, I'd fill the sea again with tears. I love shellfish. Now the reason I'm taking them out with this, rather than just pouring it straight through, is that if there's any grit, I want to make sure that that actually goes through a sieve. And then here comes that little bit of silt and sand, which I don't want. You just don't want that. You'll always get a little bit of grit in the bottom. So now some butter. In fact, that's not quite enough. A good 
and the 40 grams of butter. In go my lardons as well. Good grind of black pepper. And then while that bacon's getting going and the fat's coming out, I'm gonna take a leak. Just check down the inside. There isn't lots of mud hiding in there. No, there isn't. I love leeks. If you don't have a leek, you could use an onion, but just leeks and leeks and clams and bacon. Joy. Okay. The other joy of leeks is that they don't take that long to cook. But nonetheless, you want to make sure that they're all completely soft. Nutmeg. You've got to be quite careful with nutmeg. By the way, I'm sure you know this, but mace is the skin. That beautiful kind of thing. It looks like kind of flame almost skin. It's on the outside of the nutmeg. And the nutmeg is the nut within. And here, just a little scratch, not too much, because it's powerful stuff. Because nutmegs were incredibly expensive and you'd wear your little uh, nutmeg holder on a chain around your neck. And when you went to drink the communal drink that is punch or had it served in your house, you'd take out your little knife, your nutmeg grater Take your nutmeg out of its thing and grate it over drinks. And if you're really flash, you grate it over other people's drinks as well. And the more you grate it, then you know the more extravagant you are and you know the more money you have. I'm now trying to find a nutmeg grater because it's not a chain wearer. I'm not a kind of medallion guy. I'd love to have a nutmeg hold around my neck. A little bit too high heat. It's amazing watching people cook, never adjusting the heat and wondering why things are burning. Just want the leeks to be cooked down. What you want when you're eating it, you don't want kind of crunchy leeks. You want tender, everything should be tender and giving. While that's just doing its thing, I'm just gonna pick through these clams. Because obviously this isn't like a spaghetti vongole or something where you expect to see the shells. This is some glorious saucy toast. So all the clams are being picked out now. Very different, these little clams, to some of the things I get up in Norway. We have these enormous things called carpet clams, which when you open them up, mahogany clams. Clams inside are the size of kind of lamb sweetbreads. There's two little clamlets. Very, very good eaten raw as well. Cockles are plumper and paler. And then a bit sweeter. The smell of these is just delicious. Let's have a little. Mm. Small, but very flavoursome. And this would work very well with mussels. It would work very well with razor clams. Pretty much use any, any kind of type of shellfish, even oysters actually. I mean, the whole lot comes out of these, even what's called the foot, which is where, you know, a scallop. It's actually that big bit you eat is the bit that keeps the two halves of the shell together. It's that little bit that's left behind on the muscle, that white bit, that's the foot. But this, the whole lot comes away once they're steamed open. There we go. So, we've got some lovely juice there. Oh my God, salty, sweet, shellfishy. That's really, really delicious. One and a tiny bit. Bit of flour. Just really work that flour in carefully. Make sure it's on everything. And just let that cook a little bit. Come over here, Paul. You can see it's getting. You know, you can see where the flour is clinging onto the pan. Everything's got a bit kind of mushy. Cook that for about a minute, and then I've got my clam juice. As we start adding, you're going to see it's going to clag up a bit. I'm just making a kind of white sauce, but where you'd normally use milk, I'm using clam juice. So you get a kind of nice, rich thickness. There's gonna be some cream going into this. I've added no salt because the bacon is cured, obviously. Um, and then the clams have got come with their own amount of salt in them. So you just don't wanna make this overly salty. Nice and thick, let's have a little taste. Mm. Mm. Oh my God, yum. A little bit more clam juice. How do you know how much thicker is that? Well, I don't really want it much thinner than this. 
but then of course you can cook some away so I'm just going to keep on adding a little bit more and reducing it but the clams you don't put right into the end because they've been about as cooked as much as they should be so they're going to be the last thing I'll add some cream Starting to look like a good colour. And imagine, as I said earlier, a wet winter's day. You're coming back, you're hungry. You've been working in the woods or going for a long walk, and then this on toast. I mean, I love my crumpet and jam and all those kind of things. I love a scone with cream. But I'm not such a savoury person. And so, you know, give me a bubbling Welsh rabbit, or even better still, you know clams and leeks or mussels and leeks on toast with a hot cup of tea. Um, joy. Right, toast goes in. Well, toast doesn't go in. Bread goes in and then becomes toast. Please get it right, Warner. Okay, so now one more thing. Just that alternative greens that is some parsley. I love parsley. It's very good for you. It's good for your heart. It tastes delicious ham and parsley sauce, yum. Which I guess in a way this is. This is ham and parsley sauce with clams. And you could even take a nice piece of gammon and do clam and parsley butter on top. Um, to just a match made in heaven. In a way, we're kind of, you know, halfway to making a, you know, a chowder, a clam chowder in effect. Now, big question is, does the toast need buttering? Hell yeah. People love toast. It's a vehicle. I was I really wanted to write a book, cookbook, just about things on toast. Life on toast, it was going to be called. Toast is a, just a vehicle for absolutely everything. So a lot of butter. Butter's a health product, remember that. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Right at the end, stirring your cockles. Gonna let that down even now with just a little bit of extra clam juice. It's just getting a little coagulated. So just well, well, I'll show you. I'm not looking for. It's just that thing that cooks look for. You know, when is it right? And that was just beginning to kind of coagulate a bit. So it meant it didn't have quite enough liquid in it. So look, it's cold outside today. It was minus two this morning. There's enough here easily for two or three. Just the most delicious thing in the world. <laughs> the moment of truth. Oh God, this is just a kind of simplicity. You know, there's barely anything in that. Leeks, bacon, clams, salt, pepper, butter, a little bit of cream. To hell with all those people who say, well, the British weren't exactly famous for their food. I'm sure things like this have been made for hundreds of years. So screw you, Europe, because that is flipping delicious. It's shellfishy, there's bacon, there's that lovely kind of, you know, oniony, well, leaky thing going on. It's just sublime. This is cold weather food. I don't want to eat this on a hot day. Zero outside. It's creamy, it's salty. It's fishy and smoky. And underneath is that foundation stone of so many good things. A piece of toasted bread. Mm. So this is toasted joy. Come to Patreon. So I'm gonna make an apple charlotte, which is a fried bread, golden dome full of delicious apple and stem ginger. See you on Patreon and thanks for visiting me on YouTube. These things are easy. If you don't have any time, then clams and bacon on toast. We've all got time to cook.